the term mindfulness, but we, do we really know what it means to be mindful? Do we know how to instill that quality in our children? Hi, welcome to In and Out of Your Mind on WeTV, and I'm your host, Tina Brigley. In and Out of Your Mind is a web series designed to get you out of your head and into your life. And today's guest is Julie Fader, who's going to help us do that, help us recognize what is mindfulness. Hi, Julie, welcome. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, for sure. Um, my name is Julie, and I am the director of Head of the Class Education Center. Um, we are a full service tutoring and learning support center. And over the past 25 years of my teaching career, I have really been using mindfulness techniques uh, to help enhance learning with our kids. And recently, because of all the research that I've been reading about it, we started to do standalone classes because mindfulness is. Um, sort of tantamount to self-regulation and that's what education is really demanding right now. Right. And I was an educator for 12 years. I don't know if you know that, yes. but uh, one of the things that I really taught in my class was how to be mindful and to be paying attention to your thoughts. So what are some strategies that you use with your, actually, you know what, mm -hmm. you have a really creative and in the ingenious story that helped you to get to where you are today. Can you share that with oh, us really sure. quickly? For I don't sure. want to skip over that because no, it's no. so significant. Oh, well, thank you. Um, well, my mindfulness journey started about um, 34 years ago uh, when I was a young teen. I developed, I had some learning issues as a kid, which is what one of the reasons that prompted me to want to be a teacher. Um, and so I had ADHD, I had some visual spatial learning issues, and a lot of times that can create um, anxiety issues. Anxiety tends to be the flip side of learning issues. So um, I developed a pretty significant um, learning, um, I'm sorry, um, an anxiety mm -hmm. disorder. Um, it was called panic disorder with agoraphobia, mm -hmm. uh, which means that I had a panic attack when I was 12, and by the time I was 14, my world had shrunk to the size of my bedroom. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to go out, I wasn't able to do things because I was constantly inundated with panic, which also meant I wasn't going to school, which was really, really tricky. And I have an incredible mother who just pushed and pushed and pushed until she finally found me a practitioner who could help me, because this was the early 80s people didn't have a sense of what was going on with me at all and um, my mom found me um, a woman in the city that um, taught me the techniques and skills of mindfulness mm -hmm. and I remember being a 14 year old entering that um, that area and she had me relax for the first time in two years I had wow. a sense of relaxation for the first time in two years. And it took a while to get back to mm -hmm. everything, but it, it completely changed. And I'm so lucky and so grateful that that all happened. And I always feel like everything happens for a reason. Um, and I have continued to use those skills and, and finely tune those skills um, for my entire adult life. And so I was, by in within a year and a half to two years, I was completely panic free. I was back in school, I was able to go to university, I became the teacher that I was dreaming, always dreaming about, and now the work that I do is with kids who are having similar things going on. And I use mindfulness all the time. Um, I use mindfulness in my daily life still, but um, it, in fact I was using it before on the, in the car on the way here. You know, it's constant. And it's not, it doesn't require a special class, you don't have to have um, a yoga mat, you don't have to have anything, you can do it any time, any place, anywhere you are is where mindfulness can be. Because essentially it's allowing yourself to get into the moment. It's mm -hmm. allowing yourself. And most of the time our moments, our, uh, uh, the moments that we're experiencing are very safe, are very secure. But we often are not experiencing the safety and security of the moment because we are lost in our head. We're lost in all of the thoughts we're thinking. What am I having for supper tonight? How am I going to pay that bill? Did I leave the laundry in the washing machine? Is my child okay? These are the kinds of things that we're constantly inundated with. Mm -hmm. And we do not um, experience food. We don't experience moments. We don't experience car drive. You know, when we drive from A to B, sometimes we get to um, our destination have no idea how we got there. Yeah. And that is our, the adult condition in a lot of ways. For our beautiful kids, they already know how to do this for the most part and it's just reawakening that in them it's really amazing and it's such an underdeveloped skill taught in education yeah, isn't it absolutely I mean it's the foundation of everything yet we don't take enough time to really share with kids how is it in one moment they can get out of their anxiety their yeah. their panic their yeah. test anxiety yeah 
yeah. or anger or frustration. And you know, it's so funny because we talk about like the long, long queues for mental health services, mm. the, you know, in terms of, but I think that so much of what we teach with mindfulness develops mental health skills, you know, mm -hmm. it allows a child to know how to cope. It allows for resilience. It allows for us to have a positive outlook because part of mindfulness is gratitude practice, things like that. Absolutely. And it's amazing how that can just get you back on, on track when you're off. And I think in order to have really mindful children, we as adults and parents have to be very mindful as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't happen in isolation as I was sharing with you before the show. Um, when we teach kids, we have to teach the parents as well mm -hmm. because the kids can go home and be doing some of the techniques, but as long as the parents aren't doing it, it doesn't really help as much. Right. Um, we teach teachers, we teach kids, uh, the parents of the kids first, and then um, you know, kids learn what we do. Right. Kids learn what we do, not so much what we say. Mm -hmm. So if we're doing that in our house, it's just amazing. I was with a group of, of toddlers th this morning and I was saying to the parents, this is good for you. This mm -hmm. is good for you because you know those moments where you're like, ah! Yeah. Um, this, and you can model it for your kids. Okay, we're gonna have to get mindful for a second. Let's just take a second. Let's just have a deep breath together. And it gives you, like I used it with my own son constantly. And it was such a great thing because we would both sit and breathe together. That's you know, it yeah. was, it was incredible. And he does it, you know, yeah. to this day. He's almost 22 now. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had an experience with my daughter yesterday where she had to do a speech in front of oh, veterans. Yeah. Oh, she God. said, I can't do it. I'm too scared. I'm too yeah. scared. And it was just helping her to be aware of her thoughts. Yes. What are you actually thinking? What's causing the fear? I'm yeah. not good enough. Yes. It's not going to, you know. Yeah. So that's what kids are experiencing. Yes. All of those stories in their mind. Yes. And it's just being mindful of, okay, that's not really happening right now. Yes. What What's really happening? Exactly. You're going to go up and you're going to do your thing. It's like a string, we call it a string of pearls in a day. So your oh, day yeah. is made up of a string of pearls and it's like each moment can be a, a, a pearl on the string. But we very often don't ever enjoy any of those pearls because we're just waiting to get to the next thing and then the next thing and then mm. I have to get to this. Yes. And one of the things that we say in mindfulness is you can sort of settle into what do I get to do next mm. as opposed to what do I have to do next. Right. Because you can get into this gratitude place, you know, mm -hmm. just reframe it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great that you um, mentioned that with your daughter. And I just, we, we don't have a lot of time. I seriously could talk to you for hours about mm -hmm. mindfulness. I just think it's so valuable, so important. Thank you. But viewers that are watching right now, what are three strategies that they can take away with today to put in place in their life to help them be more mindful, which will help their children to be more mindful. I know you talk about stop the thought. Stop the thought is fantastic. And I am all about takeaways because I want people to have something that they can do at this moment. Right. Um, so stop the thought actually, um, let's talk about stop the thought next because the first thing I'd like to do is to, I'd like to teach is just really, really stop for a moment and take a breath. Mm -hmm. I think that we're not doing that enough and certainly we're not breathing, belly breathing, we're, you know, a baby belly breathes, but we are definitely shallow breathing. So if everybody that's watching and everybody here, if we could just all just take a really, really deep breath and just sort of when you re, um, release your air, just release all the tensions of the day that you've kind of carried so far. So if you just take a really deep breath, you want to have a nice straight back and you just take a really deep breath in your nose. You fill your belly with as much air as you can get in there and hold it for a second and then you release the breath slowly and you just kind of settle into your seat or your chair. And then you can do that again. And what I teach the kids is marshmallow muscles. So I, everybody knows how squishy marshmallows are. So I always say to the kids, if, um, if a marshmallow is squishy, we can make our muscles like that. So you take your deep breath in and then you release it and you let your muscles just go. And what you're doing is essentially letting the, the cares of the day away. And then um, the next thing that we teach before we teach stop the thought is we teach press the pause. Every kid knows what a pause button is. Mm -hmm. You know, we have them on. So we teach the kids that their pause button is in the center of their palm. Mm -hmm. And so we teach the kids to kind of, so you cradle yourself a little bit and you just, you can do this anywhere. I've done this in the grocery line. And you just take your thumb and you press into your palm and you take a deep breath while you're doing that. And you just release it. And it's just amazing what just that touch on your, on your palm can do. Um, and it, I always say to the kids, then you do a check-in. Do I feel better? And if you don't feel better, then you can do it again. Mm -hmm. And they can keep doing it around their fingers. 
And then the stop the thought, that comes from mindfulness, but also from some cognitive behavioral stuff. And that is every emotion that we feel in our body starts with a thought. Mm -hmm. So there is a thought in there, and most of the time, um, they are erroneous self-beliefs that we have developed by the age of five. Mm -hmm. So we work really, really hard on figuring out what that thought is because it's drumming around in there um, and sort of isolating for a moment and then telling it what's really true. Mm. That's what I say to the kids. Tell that thought what's really true. Right. Because there's a lot of thoughts that we have in there that are affecting our um, physical and mental health that are, have nothing to do with reality. Right. You know, that I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough, I shouldn't be doing this. Those are flipping around in our heads and without mindfulness in the moment, it is very difficult for us to stop and isolate, th isolate that thought and breathe it out. Thank you, Once you can do that, it's amazing. Yeah, it's like collapsing. What happened from the stories about what's happening? Yes. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for being it was here my and pleasure. sharing your expertise with us. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Remember, awareness without action does not produce results. Take these tools and strategies, apply them to your life today, share them with your children, and share them with your teachers. So thank you for watching In and Out of Your Mind on WeTV. I will see you next week. And I also want to say thank you to Mackenzie and I want to say thank you to Nicole at Ryan's Mess for providing the clothing for this show today and for Nicole for doing my hair. Thank you ladies, you're amazing. And thank you for watching and I'll see you back here next week on WeTV.